speaker of the session is going to be Dai Aoki uh, from uh, Tokyo. Tohoku. <laughs> Not Tokyo. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thank you very much. So the first of all, I'd like to thank organizers, especially Silk and Shinsuke Miao. So the, I'm going to talk about uh, very hot topics, uh, material, uranium diterrorite. Maybe some of you already heard, but it's, uh, I want to give some overview of this uh, material and uh, for the interesting point. And uh, this work was done in strong collaboration between CEA Grenoble in France and also Japanese team, so here. And so, so this uh, material is uh, ferroma uh, it's close to the ferromagnetic superconductor. It's spin triplet paramagnet, spin triplet superconductor. And so, the, so if you have interest, you can look at our review paper of ferromagnetic superconductors and the recent review paper on uranium diterite. So the, the contents of my talk is following. So first I want to give some introduction on uh, so some aspects and uranium diterite and crystal growth a little bit and uh, multiple superconducting phases and the field induced superconductivity uh, near critical pressure. And then so I want to speak about the Fermi surfaces. And so this is an overview to show the relation between the magnetism and superconductivity. So as you know, so this is a his research area and this is a year. So as you know, so the, there is a long history for both topics. But so after the discovery of superconductivity and the, uh, the, the beginning, so both phenomena are competitive phenomena. But, so you, after the discovery of cerium kappa 2 silicon 2, new region appears. This is so-called unconventional superconductivity. Then, so by year and year, so many materials discovered which is located here. So the, uh, and the main uh, uh, topics I'm going to talk is uh, actinide material. So I want to show you. So the, so you can see here the periodic table and the actinide is here. And this is so-called Wigner-Zeit radius of element. So, so with increasing the number of F electron or D electron, so you can see the, 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 it's kind of uh, atomic radius. So it's decreasing for 4F electron system. This is typical behavior of, uh, for localized system. And D electron system, you can see here, so it's dropping rapidly. And this is typical behavior of, of itinerant. On the other hand, so the 5F electron system, so you can see here, it's first it decrease, then it's increase again from the plutonium or americium. So it, this indicates that the dual nature, so the dual nature of 5F, 5F electron systems, namely the localized, or itinerant. And uh, so that's why, so it's uh, uh, actinide, is very interesting system. And so if you look at the superconductivity, there are many materials shown here. And uh, so the first uh, heavy fermion super, actinide heavy, heavy fermion superconductor is uranium beryllium 13, so already 1983. And then, so you can see the list. And so maybe you cannot see very well, but so the, the light blue is supposed to be a spin triplet superconductor. And uh, uh, so you can see uh, there are a lot of candidates for the spin triplet superconductor. And so the, uh, here, this is a ferromagnetic superconductor. And so today, I'm going to talk about the last material, uranium diterite, which is discovered 2019 uh, from uh, uh, at the, uh, by, by Shen Lang. Then, so I want to show you some, oh, it's difficult to see. Uh, I want to show you some concepts, so basic concepts for the relation. So again, so the magnetism and superconductivity is here. And so this area is so-called unconventional superconductivity. And then, so the strongly correlated electron system is exactly located here. 
then so unconventional superconductivity. That's why it's unconventional superconductivity. So another uh, uh, axis recently appears, so-called topological science or topological materials. It is here. And then, so the, you know, the uh, so-called topological superconductivity, most of the topological superconductors is located here. So these are so-called, maybe it's kind of S-wave superconductor. And topologically, topological can be tuned by, by fine tuning. And, uh, and so here is, I call the topological spin triplet superconductivity. So uh, ferromagnetic superconductors or uranium diterrae is exactly located here. So then, so I want to say that the topological materials meet strongly correlated electron systems. So another uh, view is here. So this is given by uh, Yanase-san. So S-wave superconductivity, so the, as a topo platform of topological superconductivity, so S-wave superconductivity is here, and topological uh, superconductivity can be uh, tuned by, well, by fine tuning. So, and here, this is a spin triplet superconductivity. And uh, uh, there are many material, many uh, examples for S-wave superconductivity, but to realize the to topological superconductivity, we need a fine tuning. But, so the advantage of spin triplet superconductivity is it is topological as it is. So uh, uranium diterrite is, is exactly located here. So it's a very good uh, platform, playground, to study, the topo to study this material as a topological superconductivity as well. And this is uh, uh, the view of, uh, to show the relation between the ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic superconductivity and topological uh, ferromagnetic superconductivity. So you can, this is view is given by Shen Rang when he discovered the superconductivity so in the first paper. So here you can see the temperature versus uh, ordered moment or spin fluctuation. And uh, there are three ferromagnetic superconductors are known. Uh, uranium germanium 2, uranium rhodium germanium, and uranium cobalt germanium. These are ferromagnet, and so in uranium germanium 2, so when we apply the pressure, so we can tune, tune the superconductivity. We can go this direction. And uranium rhodium germanium, so it shows us uh, ferromagnetic order, then shows the superconductivity. And uranium cobalt germanium is close to the critical region, so it again shows the ferromagnetic order, then superconductivity. On the other hand, uranium diterrite is not a uh, ferromagnet, but it's paramagnet. So it's, so at the end member of ferromagnetic uh, materials, and then so there is no ordered moment, and it's, uh, it gets superconductivity at high temperature. Well, it's around two Kelvin. But maybe this is a, to, to simplify it, so that I want to address so more detail on this point. And so as you see here, so ferromagnetism and superconductivity is uh, basically a, a competitive phenomena. So you can see from this view, so the superconductivity shows Meissner effect, so but ferromagnetism, so like this, so it's completely different behavior. So then, so it's difficult to form the spin singlet state, so instead, it forms a so-called spin triplet state, namely the up spin, up up, or down down, the like like this. And uh, yeah, okay. So the I want to show you the some uh, the uh, the highlight of ferromagnetic superconductors and uranium diterrite is here. It's uh, the phase diagram of superconductivity or Curie temperature. So you can see for ferromagnetic superconductor, so when you apply the field along B axis, Curie temperature is suppressed with field. Then, so the superconductivity, re-entrant superconductivity appears here. And here is uh, 0.25 Kelvin, and here is 0.4 Kelvin. So you can see here the superconductivity is really enhanced under magnetic field. 
And uranium, cobalt, germanium, again, shows a very spectacular uh, reentrant behavior or field-induced phenomena. And uranium diterite, this is not a uh, ferromagnet, but there is a so-called cross crossover temperature, T chi max, and this, this is just a crossover, and then this is connecting to the metamagnetic transition. This is a first order metamagnetic transition. And then, so, to up to HM, so it shows a very strong uh, field reentrant behavior. So you can see here the TC is 1.5 Kelvin, so the, but it uh, survives even up to 35 tesla. This is very amazing, so the, it's very strong, robust against the magnetic field. And this is angular dependence for three materials, angular dependence of HC2 for different, for three materials. So you can see, you can see the very strong anisotropic behavior. So uranium rhodium germanium and cobalt germanium show the reentrant or sharp increase. So when you apply the field along the hard magnetization axis. So this is easy axis. C axis is easy axis. And uranium diterite is also similar. I mean the easy axis is A axis. And for B, B axis, the hard axis shows the reentrant behavior here. And again, so this is also very unusual. So between B and C axis, there is another superconducting pocket up to uh, 60 tesla. So, so in the uh, hard axis direction. Okay, so this is this was a kind of highlight, and I want to go show you more detail. So uranium diterite is a paramagnet, heavy fermion parama paramagnet. The gamma value is 120 millijoule. And the space group is IMMM. This is body-centered uh, orthorhombic system. And so the important point in this structure is uh, there is a two-leg ladder structure of uranium. So here, you can see. So this is kind of dimer of uranium. And the inversion center of, of this crystal structure is located here not at atomic side. This is an important point. And uh, from this uh, peculiar crystal structure, magnetic frustration is discussed theoretically, and they discuss the antiferromagnetic interaction and ferromagnetic interaction. And uh, another important point was proposed by Professor Harima, and he proposed that the lowering symmetry uh, from IMMM to the PNNN so because this cannot be n n n so if you look the international tables we cannot distinguish so the from the this lowering cannot can cannot be distinguished distinguished from the conventional x-ray because atomic position is always the same so this is a possible and uh, in this case the brillouin zone is drastically changed so you can see the, so the electronic structure may be different so, and this crystal structure is somehow uh, uh, unstable. So if you apply the pressure, so it's changing from the orthorhombic IMMM to the I4MMM. So it indicates the structural instability. And what is also interesting is uh, when you apply the pressure, the, di the distance between the first nearest neighbor of uranium is decreasing, but jump increasing. Then, so like this. So, uh, yeah, well, this is just for the high pressure, but so I will discuss more detail for this point later on. And uh, I want to say some uh, uh, comparison uh, between the uranium rhodium germanium and also recently discovered the cerium rhodium so multiple superconducting, multiple superconducting superconductor, cerium rhodium to arsenic 2. So you can see all of the materials show the inversion center is not located at the, uh, at, at the uranium. So it's just between the at atomic, just between. So here, or here, and here. And this is a space group. And this is an uh, interest important point. And so the, I want to call this uh, uh, Anderson 
the statement. So he suggests that this suggests that the all the parities, spin triplet superconductor must have at least two F shell atoms per unit cell. And uh, furthermore, so it's uh, by Daniel Agderberg, he suggests, he told me that the non symorphic space group stabilizes the spin triplet state. So this is an interest, important point. So non symorphic space group means, so there are five, uh, 157 space group out of 230. So it means, non symorphic means, uh, so glide or screw uh, symmetry rotation included, something like this. So for example, PNMA, so N or A is included. So then it's non symorphic. So P4 slash NMM, so N is included. So then it's non symorphic. So this is maybe interesting, important. So this is demonstrated by serum rhodium to arsenic 2. So this is uh, 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 the result from Dresden. <coughs> So they discovered the multiple superconductivity of serum rhodium to arsenic 2 when the field is applied along C axis. So you can see here the TC is only 0.3 or 0.25 Kelvin, but it survived up to 14 tesla. And then it shows the, the phase boundary between two phases. And this is, an, well, this is a result, our results. It's we basically, we confirm their results. So I think the, the result is correct. So the idea is so-called staggered rush bar spin orbit coupling exists in this material. This plays an important role switching from the even parity to the odd parity superconductivity. From this point, so there are um, uh, uh, several, mat many materials show the non-central symmetric, locally non-central symmetric superconductivity like this. So you can see some example, not only the uh, F electron system. So, but the other material also shows such kind of non central, locally non central symmetric superconductivity. So, uh, now I want to coming back to, uh, uranium diterite. So it's, uh, the, this is magnetic proper, magnetic susceptibility as a function of temperature. So it's quite anisotropic. But the important point is when we apply the field along hard axis, B axis, we can see that so-called T-chi broad maximum of susceptibility. So it's so-called T-chi max. And uh, the magnetization, so it's like this at low field. But when we apply the field up to 60 tesla, so for B axis, we can see the sharp metamagnetic transition. It's a first order transition. And this is connecting to the uh, T-chi max, so-called T-chi max. 35 tesla, uh, 35 Kelvin, and this is connecting to the 35 tesla. This is well known for heavy fermion or systems. Uh, so here you can see a lot of uh, magnet magnetic susceptibility. So all shows the so-called T chi max, and T chi max is corresponding to the can be scaled by the metamagnetic field HM. So you can see a lot of material follow this relation. Okay, so then, so for superconductivity, uh, uranium diterite now, nowadays, so we get a, a very, very high quality single crystal, TC is close to 2 Kelvin or 2.1 Kelvin. So the, you can see the sharp superconducting transition. And so the temperature dependence of resistivity is a typical heavy fermion system. And uh, a specific heat shows a sharp jump at, at two, at two Kelvin, and the residual term is very small, about only 3%. So it indicates the high quality single crystal is now available, and the strong coupling from the sharp jump. And uh, so where we know that the, from the, we, here you can see the TC versus residual density of state from the specific heat. So we have a different quality samples so sometimes it's TC is about 1.5, but in that case, the residual density of state is more than 50%, but higher quality, getting the higher quality sample, the residual density of state is almost zero, and it's about 2.1 Kelvin. And this residual density of state is very important, and so in ferromagnetic superconductor, it's known that the, there is a large res residual density of state which is essential 
I mean, the not extrinsic reason, because these are high quality single crystal. And this is discussed from the so called A1 state. So you can see here, so the one of the spin is gapped, but the other is ungapped. So then the, there is a residual density of state. But uh, this is a case for ferromagnetic, uh, ferromagnetic state. And uh, in the uranium diterite, it's paramagnet, so we should be here. So that's why, so we, we, ha we have uh, nearly zero uh, residual density of state. And uh, for the, uh, the kind of evidence for the spin triplet superconductivity, it's given by NMR. So you can see here the night shift between A, B, C axis. So for a TC, it slightly decreased, but this decrease is much smaller than we expected from the spin singlet state. So this indicates that the spin triplet state. But for more detail, of course, we need a further experiment using the higher quality sample TCs to Kelvin. And uh, also, uh, this is uranium diterite shows the sign of a topological superconductivity. This is given by a, a STM experiment. So chiral triplets topological superconductivity, they said. And also the, from the chi effect, so non-zero chi effect. So it means a time reversal symmetry breaking, and this uh, order parameter is proposed. And so recently, I recognized that the edge state, this kind of edge state is very important. So not only from the physics, but also from the FIFA World Cup, Japan and Spain. So you can see here, it's uh, the V-bonds are against the Spain, so I'm very <laughs> proud of this. But this is indicate edge state is very important. <laughs> I re recognize. <laughs> okay, so the, and then, so the uh, superconductivity again. So here, uh, the, I want to show you the HC2 for V axis, so HC, uh, for ABC axis. So at that time, so TC was still lower, but so you can see for V axis, free early entrance superconductivity. It also indicated by the re magnetic resistance. And so from this, ah, yeah, I forgot to say that because TC is 1.5 Kelvin, so we expect the power limit is around here. So the, but, so all direction shows the exceeding, highly exceeding the power limits. So the, it indicates the spin tri triplet state. And theoretically, there are many proposals like this. And uh, so the, uh, quite recently, so we measured by specific heat measurement. Uh, and so between the so high, so reentrant part and the lower field, so there is a phase boundary here. And this is uh, uh, detected by the specific heat measurement, so namely here. So even at ambient pressure, it shows the multiple superconducting phases. And under pressure, so it's more interesting. So TC versus pressure, so superconductivity is suppressed at 1.45 Kelvin, and TC is split at 0 0.2 gigapascal, very low pressure. So one is increasing, the other is decreasing. And here you can see here from the specific heat. And this multiple superconducting phase is known for other uranium compounds, UPT3 or uranium beryllium-13, doped with thorium. And of course, you know that the superfluid helium-3 is known as a multiple superconducting fluid, superfluid, like this. So this, these results indicate a strong indication for the spin triplet state. And so the under pressure and under magnetic field, what happened? For A axis is like this. And then so the, when we measure the magnetic resistance, we show the very, we found the very spectacular increase of the HC2 here. And what, what it is? And then so the, we measured more detail by AC calorimetry measurement, we, AC calorimetry. Uh, under pressure, so you can see a lot of uh, anomalies inside the superconducting phase. And then, so we constructed the phase diagram. So in fact, 
So there is a two transition at zero field, and this increase is due to the lower TC, connecting to the lower TC like this. So at least there are three superconducting phases exist at around 0.54 GPA. And this is also, uh, theoretically, it is explained by these people. And this is the evolution so of the phase diagram. So this is close to the ambient pressure, but applying the pressure, so we can see the multiple superconducting phases. And then finally, above 1.5 GPA, superconductivity is uh, completely disappears and magnetic ordered phase. Probably it's antiferromagnetic state is realized. And so here, this uh, for, I, I showed the results for A axis, but B axis and C axis is like this. So you can see the multiple superconducting phases is still surviving, so even up to 1.2 GPA. Okay, so I think it should. So I want to skip some part, but so here, so uh, for B axis, so metamagnetic transition is strongly suppressed with pressure, then so it's suppressed. And this is consistent with the analysis of Krause's Krapeyron relation. And for C axis, what is interest is uh, supercon the HC2 curve shows the almost vertical behavior at 1.34 GPA. So this is uh, very unusual. And then, so if you tune the pressure just above the critical pressure, so we can detect the uh, field-induced superconductivity. So you can see here for one Kelvin, so it's normal state, but with fields, so it gets the superconductivity between this region. So this is a phase diagram. So the, there is a uh, magnetic ordered phase, and it's cross, and superconductivity appears when the moment is polarized state. And this is the evolution as a function with different pressure. So the supercon superconducting phases is pushed up to the 30 tesla, and then finally disappears. Okay, so I think I, I should uh, go more deep. Uh, I should uh, quickly go show some, quickly show the results of Fermi surfaces. So this is a band structure given by uh, Professor Harima, and the LDA band calculation predicts the condo semiconducting behavior. It's, you can see here the gaps, there is a small gap at the Fermi energy. And uh, this is not realistic because it's uh, uranium diterride is re really good metal. So to get the Fermi surface, we need a Coulomb repulsion U. Then, so we can get the Fermi surfaces. This is the calculation. And then, so the, we did the DHBA experiment using the high quality single crystal. So you can see a very nice quantum oscillation. And this is a, a FF, FFT, FFT spectrum. So we get the two kinds of Fermi surfaces, alpha and beta. And this is the angular dependence of DHBA frequency compared to the uh, uh, band calculation using the uh, U equal two electron volt. So you can see a good consistency agreement between this and this. So basically, two kinds of cylindrical film surfaces are detected. One is uh, the whole film surface, the red one, alpha one and alpha two, and the other is electron film surfaces like this, the blue one. So. This is the Fermi surfaces. And so if you do the band calculation, calculation for sodium diterite, so this corresponds to the 5F2 localized case. So basically, so the topological, topology of Fermi surfaces are quite similar, but it's more two-dimensional. And uh, but so you can see that it, this is more close to the experimental results. So the, we can conclude that the uh, also, we can say that this is uh, based on the 5F3 model, but we need the U. So it indicates the mixed balance state. And then, so the, yeah, also the, yeah, for the question is how it relates with the superconductivity. And the theory is given by Monso and Rondalich. If you have interest, you can look at this paper. 
Okay, so I think it's, uh, yeah, the effective mass is very large like this, and it's, uh, this indic so this can reproduce the, the gamma value, so we detected the main film surfaces. I think, so the, I want, I want to skip this uh, point, so the, I wanted to discuss about the, uh, reentrant superconductivity, so this part, but I will skip. So I think it's time to stop, so, so this is a summary of my talk. So I showed the reentrant superconducting behavior and multiple superconducting phases and field in super, superconductivity. And finally, I showed the Fermi surfaces, two dimensional Fermi surfaces detected by DHB experiment. Okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for this uh, overwhelming talk. <laughs> Uh, a lot of data. So, so uh, the the Hasfan Alfen experiment was yeah. done only in zero pressure, or you did it uh, at, at different this pressures? Is, uh, zero, zero pressure. I see. So, yeah. I, I assume you are you will be doing that as well. Yeah, function. this is okay. a very interesting, so important target. So, okay. To do so, that. yeah, I was wondering pressure. what what would happen in that situation where you are at yeah. like 1.45 gigapascal, yeah. whether you might see any yeah. effect of the Fermi surface yeah. change or? Yes, so the, I think one of the targets is to see the, so the, what happens above the critical pressure and the Fermi surface change. This is the important target. And, but Yeah, but perhaps even also as function of magnetic field, whether there's anything happening where the superconducting dome is maximum. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. I, so I'd this be is, interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting point, but so it's a quite difficult experiment, experimentally, because yes. <laughs> uh, uh, effective mass is already more than 30 m0, and then so the HC2 is also close to 15 tesla or something. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, we need a, a high 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 field and low temperature. Experimentally, it's quite difficult, but we should try. Uh, thanks for the very nice overview. Uh, I want to understand uh, what is the evid experimental evidence on which the story of the ferro of uh, UT2 being on the verge of a magnetic instability based on? Is there evidence for criticality in the normal state that we are basing this uh, story on? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know how to answer this uh, point, uh, so your question. Uh, uh, the, well, there are many uh, evidence uh, the, for suggest the, for example, the, uh, applying the pressure just above, uh, just one GPA, so it gets the magnetic order. So it's close to the magnetic order the state, so initially. But the, uh, the important question is if this magnet, so probably superconductivity is induced by the magnetic fluctuation, but the magnetic fluctuation is, is really ferromagnetic fluctuation or antiferromagnetic fluctuation or both. So this is an important point. And uh, antiferromagnetic fluctuation with incommensurate Q vector is uh, experimentally detected. But the direct ferromagnetic fluctuation was not yet uh, obtained. So this is a yeah, important point and we should that what we should study more in detail. Well, I wanted to understand yeah. whether there is a mode going soft in the sense of it be a critical state requires something to go soft and in the zero pressure phase in the zero pressure uh, so you think of it as a uh, near critical because at a small pressure you are getting magnetic order so the zero pressure material must also near, be a near an instability? Is that the way we, we should think yeah, of Yeah, uh, the soft means the structure. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, in fact, so the, this material is, uh, uh, just a moment, maybe, I don't know, this is uh, for, good for you, but uh, so uh, this material forms a uh, so space group, IMMM, like this. And this is so-called uranium diterroid type. There are no other material shows this crystal structure. 
and very unique crystal structure. And then, so with pressure, it's switching to the uh, uh, tetragonal I4 MMM. This is very well known structure, and you can see many times. So I think somehow the structure is is somehow unstable, and e it can easily switch to this uh, uh, pressure. So I think this is uh, one of the important points. So in my thank you, thank you. So I I recall. There was a suggestion that there may be a, a three-dimensional permit surface yeah. Yeah. Uh, near the Jones Center. So, yeah. what, so what's the status of that? Yeah. So the yeah, this is an important point. Also, uh, the Fermi surfaces, if uh, yeah. So I want to show you the the discussion. The Fermi surface two only two-dimensional or three-dimensional. So this is the important point. And so the, if you look the uh, resistivity curve, so C and A, you can see the anisotropy is not very large. And, uh, ah, sorry. and uh, the anisotropy of HC2 is also, we can, this we can fit with the effect, so-called effective mass model, but it's still not very large compared to the uh, perfect two-dimensional Fermi surfaces. So I expect there is a three-dimensional Fermi surfaces exist. And recently, uh, Shen Ran and the, the, the co-worker, they show the, in the archive paper, they show the three-dimensional Fermi surfaces. It's very small pocket Fermi surfaces. But so effective mass is very small, which could be detected in our experiment. But we didn't see any uh, signature of this point. So for the trust on Andre's experiment, uh, uh, they didn't see this three-dimensional uh, point? Except the paper by uh, Shen Ran's, okay. so PD, uh, uh, T, TDO experiment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a question regarding the NMR data. Yeah. So you said that there was a suppression of the night shift, but it was not sufficient uh, suppression, and so you said it's a spin triplet? Yeah. Is that uh, yeah. So I wonder how this suppression compares to uh, strontium ruthenate. And uh, because in that case, also you see a, a smallish suppression, and yeah. you rule out yeah. uh, spin triplet, and you say it's yeah. a spin singlet, but yeah. in this case, you continue to say yeah. it's a so yeah, so uh, I I forgot to bring the the they expect they show some uh, s simulation if it is a spin singlet case so how it decreases so and it's much bigger than this so you can see here zero point this is only zero point two or zero point one but so if it is spin singlet it should be like this it's much bigger than this but so the of course so this decrease. Of, of course, it's also depending on the magnetic field, so the d vector rotation and so on. And also, what I don't like is for A axis, there is a lot of scatter. Yeah. Experimental difficulty exists. And uh, this must be solved using the high quality sample. So the, I think, so the, they are, uh, yeah, they are doing more detail. So the, this is required. Yeah. So is there any quantitative study that tells you the, for a given amount of suppression it is a spin triplet for other uh, it's a spin uh, spin singlet right so it it seems like it boils down to a quantitative statement and uh, it's not very clear whether uh, for the uh, quantitative statement I think uh, there is uh, some uh, simulation yeah. assuming some uh, Okay. At some point. So I think there is some still ambiguity. In All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, hi. So uh, when you were studying the pressure-induced, uh, pressure-driven phase diagram, yes. uh, there are four superconducting states. So yes. are these all triplets? Uh, 
this we experimentally we don't know in fact so the uh, Uh, but basically, so uh, we don't know what is the order parameter between these. But so the theoretically, it is proposed like this. So yeah, but uh, I cannot say from the experimentary. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Tai, um, about the CPU connectivity, whether there are nodes or whether it's uh, fully gapped, what's the status of Yeah, that? so the recent study, so at the beginning of this study, so they proposed a point node gap along A axis from the specific heat measurement or thermal conductivity and so on. But recent experiment using the high quality sample shows like a full gap state. So from the field dependence of summer conductivity is very similar to the niobium uh, case, niobium, for example. And uh, so the, yeah, so they propose kind of the AU state from the at low field, so from the recent experiment. Hi, uh, the arch, arch sound is usually a very useful technique to uh, detect whether there are multiple component superconducting order parameter or not. So is there any data, arch sound uh, data on this material? So, sorry, the pitch technique. Please. Is there any arch sound uh, data on this material? Ultrasound, ah, ultrasound. Yes, ah. uh, thank you. Yeah, ultrasound experiment is now going on, in fact. But for superconductivity, is uh, not yet studied so far. Uh, only at high temperature, so it is studied. And they discuss the, the structural instability. So there is, they detected some mode, I forgot which mode, but some mode shows the softening. So there is some structural instability exists. Yeah. So in the pressure phase diagram, what is the experimental evidence that the second transition is a new superconducting order parameter and not another different order parameter? Uh, the, I think so. Uh, there is uh, experimentally, so here this phase diagram is constructed by the specific heat measurement. Yes. And uh, uh, to be honest, it's difficult to say if directly if it is a superconductivity or other, like for example, magnetism and so on. But naturally thinking, so if you look the phase, this is the superconductivity, sure, by magnetic resistivity. So naturally we can expect this is a continuous uh, uh, continuous, I think. So what's your personal view of what's the strongest evidence for spin triplet superconductivity? Is it the ensemble of everything you have or would you name one experiment, one evidence that you think is the strongest hint? Uh, well, for me, it's a two important points. Is, uh, one is uh, uh, this, uh, so this kind of uh, multiple superconducting phases because this is due to the spin and orbital degree of freedom exists in the spin triplet superconductivity. And the other is uh, 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 the night shift of the NMR. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have time for one more quick question. Any takers? Yeah, okay, good. So what is known about the magnetic ordered phases? You suggested yeah. they might be ferromagnetic? So this is uh, still uh, ongoing. So the, I mean the, uh, uh, well, maybe I just show this. Uh, so this is, so we speculate, we ex probably this is uh, antiferromagnetic order because it's uh, when you apply the, uh, the, Magnetic field, 
So it, sh so it collapses like this, like antiferromagnetic uh, ordered state. So, uh, but microscopic evidence for of magnetic order here is still not 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 known. Yeah, okay. we should study by NMR and so on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ah, and also I forgot to say that uh, so we did a magnetization measurement, magnetic susceptibility measurement, and here so we can see the small uh, some uh, the drop of the magnetic susceptibility through this uh, that here and here. So this indicates that it's not ferromagnetic order. Okay, great. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>